Hey everyone, Nick here and welcome back to GameJube, and welcome back to our Puppy Playtime character concept series. So in today's video, the character we're looking into is the Chomperdial. So we'll go into this character's backstory, location, gameplay mechanics, and all that good stuff as well. And as always, I will just state that everything I say in these videos isn't necessarily linked to the overall lore and universe of Poppy Playtime. This is just a fun, creepy, cool story we get to tell, and we hope you enjoy. And lastly, do be sure to subscribe to GameJube as it helps out a lot and it's greatly appreciated. It also keeps you up to date with all the videos that we post. Alrighty everyone, well let's get into the character concept of the Chomperdial. So in our previous video, our main protagonist went up against the troublesome troll dolls in the fabrics department of the factory. They managed to fight them off with their newfound ability, the Flame Grab. After they made their escape, they now found themselves in a new area of the factory. And this area is the board games and puzzle department. Another range of products that Playtime Co manufactured was in fact a number of different board games and puzzles. These included such titles as Huggies and Ladders, Hungry Hungry Bronze, Candy Cats Candyland, and many more. But a lesser known board game that they made was Mr. Chomperdial. This was a board game slash toy that was solely based on randomised choice. Players would have to reach their fingers inside Chomperdial's mouth and push back one of their teeth. Each player would have to do this until one unlucky person picks the wrong tooth and gets chomped. The player who gets chomped is the loser. This proved to be quite a popular product in their line of board games. Of course, there was many variations of this game already on the market. But Playtime Co being the popular name they were, their version was the most well known. But as popular as the product was, this didn't mean it was without its faults. Many reports started to surface about Mr. Chomperdile clamping down on children's hands and refusing to spring back open. Not many of these reports were confirmed and some were hidden from the public. But regardless, Playtime Co issued a recall and emptied all the shelves to prevent any further incidents occurring. No one knows what was wrong with the Mr. Chomperdile game. As far as Playtime Co was concerned, they were a fine working product. But like always, there's much more than meets the eye. So as our protagonist explores this new area, they find themselves walking down a corridor. They come across a large door with a new looking switch. It was glowing orange and had a thermometer right next to it. It looks like a temperature activated switch. Maybe the new grab hand they acquired might be exactly what they need. They aim it at the switch and scorch it. The temperature rises as the switch activates and unlocks the door. They now walk out into the main production area of the board games and puzzle section. They can see multiple machines producing little game board pieces of the miniature versions of the Playtime Co characters. As they look around, they can see a set of stairs leading up to a higher level. They walk up and get a better view of the assembly area. Out in the distance, they can see something quite strange. It appeared to be a giant Chomperdile toy that was built into the wall. They've never seen a version of this toy so big. The player stood there and wondered if it had always been there. From the looks of it, it appears the giant Chomperdile can't move from the wall. There doesn't seem to be any other exit door in this place. It seems that the only exit may be where the large crocodile toy is. So they decide to head down and investigate. Whilst making their way through this area, they come across more temperature switches. Each obstacle they come up against would need to be activated with the flame grab. Some switches would need to be activated at a specific temperature. If they go over the specific temperature, they would need to start again. Eventually, they come across a strange looking puzzle. They would need to arrange specific game board pieces in the correct sized order. Ooh. 
Once they got the sequence correct, another path would open up for them. After they made their way through all the obstacles and the puzzles, they finally reached the giant trumpet aisle. This thing was massive. They've never seen a toy like this before. As they look inside the large creature's mouth, they see the exit. The trumpet aisle must have been built into the wall. And the only way to reach the exit was to walk through their giant mouth. Who knows if the creature's jaws would come crashing down on them. With hesitation, they climb into the mouth and walk towards the door. As they go to open the door, it's locked shut. A wire cage suddenly slams down behind them, locking them inside the creature's mouth. They can see next to the door was a written message. It reads, pick the correct tooth to unlock the door. It must be exactly like the original game. The player just has to pick the correct tooth and it will unlock the door. But if they pick the wrong one, they might get crushed. One by one, they start to press down each of the teeth. The player would have to use their grab hand to extend it and press down one of the teeth. As the number of teeth got smaller, it would start to really ramp up the tension. The player could be crushed at any moment without knowing the correct tooth. This would be entirely left up to chance. And the placement of the tooth would change every time the player dies and respawns. The player is almost done with this anxiety-inducing game of chance. They're now down to the two last teeth. One will unlock the door and the other will crush them to death. After some time thinking it through, they choose one of the teeth. They press it down and wait for the outcome. Seconds feel like hours as they wait for their possible doom. And then suddenly, the exit door unlocks. Finally, they can exit this area and this creature's deadly mouth. They got out of this one just by the skin of their teeth. Or should they say, the trumpet isle's teeth. They walk through the door and await the next area and threat ahead of them. Now I feel the trumpet isle would be a really cool addition to our Poppy Playtime roster of characters. Not only would they be a really tense and nerve-wracking boss encounter, but it would also be interesting to see a boss that you actually have to overcome as an obstacle. All in all, I think they would really ramp up the gameplay and also ramp up the tension as well. Alrighty everyone, that's what we have for today's video. I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, please consider leaving a like, commenting, and subscribing. It's an upside lot and it's greatly appreciated. As always, let us know in the comment section down below what you thought of the Chomper Dial and what you'd like to see going forward. Alrighty everyone, well, until the next video, I'll catch you later. Bye.